Now, this is the pro tip side of things. Something that some of you may be interested in, some things you guys may not be interested in, but if you're looking for an extra bit of heat, Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist on this channel. I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're gonna be looking at a beginner's guide to greenhouses and specifically a Canadian gardener's guide to greenhouses. So most of you guys do know that I am in a zone three in Canada or a USDA zone four. So we're cold here and greenhouses are controversial as to whether or not you would want to use them mostly because we have a short growing season and that frost free date and those cold nights like to just beat up right to the last minute so i'm going to give you a bit of a guide on how to start a greenhouse earlier in the year and kind of what to do when it's the daytime first nighttime whether or not you should run a heater a fan all that stuff and this is what i've been doing for years now it works brilliantly and i do recommend getting your greenhouse mostly because they're inexpensive and they make a big difference honestly they do make a big difference and this is a sneak peek about the video i will be filming afterwards that you guys will also be seeing and i'm going to be going through all the different types of soil types you can get at a walmart or a grocery store wherever it may be and exactly what each one of those are used for i have to apologize the puppies are outside with me so if you hear barking and craziness it's these looney tunes going wild so let's go walk over to the greenhouse and I'll show you guys exactly what I do over in mine so this is a new greenhouse I actually had one that was much much smaller than this so this is a Magi dome setup and I'll show you kind of what is going on inside this is really really nice especially right now with the lumber prices this style greenhouse is ideal so what makes the magi dome so inexpensive and useful right now especially with the lumber prices is this connector and that's what makes it so unique i'll put a link down below if you want to grab your connectors but essentially all this is is one by two boards that are placed into the connectors and screwed down and it makes a giant dome which is very very cool one by twos are very inexpensive so i'll leave a link down below for these if you want to grab them and it is a made by a canadian company the gentleman who makes them actually is um from bc born and raised in saskatchewan good old ukrainian boy and uh yeah he sent these over and i'm in love i like this it's a nice sturdy structure and it's got huge huge ceilings where i fully intend to hang my hanging basket so enough about the structure let's get into the details as to whether or not i leave the door open if i leave it closed fans all that fun jazz so what i like to do at night is i will water because you're in a cold climate that moisture is going to help take the edge off if your heater ever quit or it ended up getting super duper cold outside so i like to kick it off by increasing the humidity inside the dome the best way to do that is through watering so because i'm on a grass floor i'll water the grass i will water the trays i may even water the walls if it's definitely getting cold out and then i will turn on my heater so this is the heater that i use i will also leave a link down below for this what i like to do is put it on 50 1500 watts and high remember i'm in zone three you may not need to go that warm i will turn it down as the season gets a little bit hotter outside at night but right now we're getting down to around minus five minus ten depending on the night outdoors so i i do need to keep it relatively high so i will run that all night doors closed and i'm good once i wake up in the morning i will come outside and i will immediately shut off my heater if it is plus temperatures in the afternoon in any way shape or form the heater goes off a little bit of cold isn't a bad thing you have to remember these plants eventually are going to have to get used to a colder climate and surviving outdoors so so long as it's showing positive temperatures for the afternoon the heater goes off regardless of if it's minus temperatures in the morning then what i like to do is look at the forecast if i'm showing a positive temperature that is below 10 degrees celsius or this is the fahrenheit then i will leave my door shut so this door i will leave completely closed 
I don't want to lock myself in, but I will leave it closed with the heater off. No fans, nothing fancy like that. That will be enough to solarize and keep the heat inside of this little hut and essentially keep my plants happy. If it is above 10 degrees Celsius, I actually will leave my door wide open. So this is going to allow for airflow, no fans, nothing fancy again, but it's going to help with airflow and make sure it doesn't get too warm inside of my greenhouse, which is exactly what we want. We want to prevent bolting and this is the best way to do it. Now there are times at night where it's going to get very, very cold. If that happens, I may throw a comforter blanket over top of my greenhouse, but honestly you guys, greenhouses make a huge difference. Ever since I've moved my plants out here, out from underneath the grow lights, I've noticed pretty rapid growth. So there are some great benefits to using a greenhouse setup. I want you guys to keep one thing in mind. Heat is just as deadly as cold. So if you leave that door closed and it starts getting above 10 degrees Celsius, then you need to find someone somewhere to come to your house while you're at work or you come home at work and you open it up. Very important, you will come home to very, very sick plants if you do not do so. Now, this is the pro tip side of things. Something that some of you may be interested in, some things you guys may not be interested in, but if you're looking for an extra bit of heat, you can actually add heat sinks. And this can come in the form of bricks, such as what I have down here, or it could be a giant jug of water, something that's going to heat up during the day and slowly release heat at night. This will give you an even bigger edge on the heater. And in some cases, depending on how big your heat sink is, you may be able to go heater less and just run that heat sink profile. So that is kind of neat as well. And the final pro tip here is if you have melons, watermelon, cantaloupes, honeydews or peppers tomatoes that you want to grow and you want to flower sooner in the year or have a longer season then consider potting them in containers and actually putting them inside of a greenhouse you're gonna have to leave that greenhouse door open during the day but this little bit of heat capture and lack of airflow actually can result in some melon development so if you're super into that sort of thing and you want to get some wicked harvest off your peppers tomatoes melons then maybe consider setting up a greenhouse and running it all year long now for me personally i don't do that never have i may at some point in time as an experiment however i do know people that do do it like i said it just means that this door, you could either completely remove it for the summer season, or you're gonna wanna prop it open because it will be open day and night. The exception to this is if it starts getting a little bit cool at night. So if it drops below 15 degrees Celsius, then you may want to close this at night just to capture some of that heat and keep that ambient temperature up. This will develop very healthy plants, very full plants, and lots of fruit. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. Hit that subscribe button and give it a thumbs up. As always, if you think this video is going to help someone out, be sure to share it on whatever platform you think will benefit, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!